Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Happy Boxing Day for all of those who celebrate that weird holiday. Uh, America not included in that. Everybody who celebrated Christmas yesterday, ha Merry, Happy Christmas, wherever, however you say it. Uh, just a quick housekeeping note before we jump on into Hot News. Our editor is currently on leave from now until the middle of January, and she's actually going to be moving from South Africa to the United States. So that means your boy is gonna be editing all of your videos from here on out for the next month or so. And that just means that uh, production quality is gonna go down slightly, just a little bit. I'm gonna do my best to try to keep up. But uh, if you notice any editing differences in this video, be sure to just let Kathleen know down below in the comments how much you miss her and how much you miss her editing style because I simply just don't have the prowess that she has. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into the first article of hot news, which is we finally have indication of Intel's first discrete GPU. We've known about Project Z for quite some time. We've had hints here and there about it. Raja Kadori has even had his Tesla Model X say something about June 2020. And now finally, the DG1 has been revealed. The information has been revealed showing that it has 96 execution units, which if we take a look at how everything actually is with what we expect out of Project Z as a whole, because remember, Project Z covers a whole bunch of GPUs, everything from what's going to be in the integrated graphics on an Intel CPU all the way up to server stuff. So this one, the discrete GPU, the DG1 with 96 execution units, looks to be slightly faster than what we're getting on the Ice or Tiger Lake iGPU that's coming with the next generation of Intel CPU. CPUs. But from what we know, that's supposed to be remarkably faster than what's currently available out on the market. But generally speaking, this DG1 is looking to be a low end GPU. This isn't going to be something that's going to break the bank or something that's going to destroy records. It looks like it's going to be sufficient for somebody who's looking for a GTX, you know, 1050, 1650 level something that's the general indication. We obviously have no more information than just what the specs are listed here with the 96 execution units and the theoretical 768 shading units, but it's out in the internet. It's officially filed for. We should expect more information as the months progress about this, but Intel's GPU showing up. And then there's also some information about the LGA 1200 socket. There's a sketch of it, as you can see on the screen right now. And this basically is going to be the next generation of Comet Lake is the rumor that's coming out right now. The 10 core 20 thread CPU that will still be on 14 nanometers. So it's basically going to be the 9900K with two more cores, but basically not much else, but it has to be brought on a brand new socket so that the motherboards can deliver the power for those 10 cores. And yes, you're going to have to upgrade. However, it does look like they're going to be compatible with previous coolers, so you won't have to upgrade that. But another motherboard from Intel, fantastic stuff. And then there's some information regarding Tiger Lake's CPU, which should be on 10 nanometers if everything stays the same in that they are able to finally hit four gigahertz on all cores. And one of the reasons this is a big deal, even though Intel released the 9900KS that hits five gigahertz on all cores, is that as you go down in nanometers, typically you're not able to hit the same clock speed as previously until you optimize a few things. So the fact that they're able to hit four gigahertz now on a 10 nanometer process versus five gigahertz on a 14 nanometer process process means that they're actually making advancements, which is one of the reasons why we didn't really see a clock speed increase on AMD's Ryzen 3000 chips. The seven nanometer process makes it difficult to hit higher frequencies, but uh, it, the, I mean, the IPC performance made up for that. And then a last little bit of CPU stuff. It appears that China's Shaoxin processors, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that. Anyways, they are now working with China's own domestically produced operating system known as Udemy Operating System or UOS. The two are working in conjunction, which is allowing China to potentially broad, broaden into the world of producing all of their own computers and not having to rely on Silicon Valley or Taiwan for that kind of stuff. Although Taiwan Technically, China depends on who you... I'm not bringing that up here. Let's move on. In case you like laptops, MSI is teasing a brand new laptop. If you can see in this image right here, that black, sleek, matte black look 
fantastic. I love it. It looks amazing. This equation right here, the square root of 6,666 minus 2,2044 plus 66, that just equals 66. It's theorized that this is for the GS66, or they're going to call it EVO66, or somehow it ties into Star Wars and executing Order 66. I don't know, but new laptop from MSI and the Creator 17 laptop that it's expected to be unveiled at CES is apparently going to be the world's first laptop with mini LED technology in the display with 240 local dimming zones. It's going to have 100% DCI-P3 color space, 4K HDR 1000, over 1000 nits brightness. This is really actually a Creator laptop. MSI looks to be bringing out something that is going to be great, including things such as an SD card reader, Type-C port supporting 8K image to an external display, Thunderbolt, and a whole bunch of other features. Holy crap, this almost is what a MacBook should be, MSI. Kind of killing it. I, I love, I love, we'll have to wait and see. But then also, Adata apparently might be branching out into the world of laptops. CES is expected to be when they are going to announce their XPG Xenia, a 15.6-inch uh, Core i9 gaming laptop. Great. This is probably a rebrand of Clevo or Tong Fang. It's probably nothing we haven't seen before, but XPG branching out into the laptop world. And speaking of China, this probably would have been a good time to put this article next to the other China article. Anyways, it looks like in 2020, China is going to be cutting the import tariffs on selected tech products. As you can see here, they're going to be reducing the provisional tax rate on a whole bunch of things, including <clears throat> the sludge dryer, which is going to go from a 9% tax rate down to a... Uh, 5% tax rate, which that's dry my sludge. Need that to be cheaper. Sludge prices, sludge drying prices have gotten too dang high. I'll tell you what. And you know what else is high on my list of things that I want now and I didn't know I needed them? Rivian showed off what their new uh, cyber truck is what I was going to call it. Their R1T truck can do and that is my friends a tank turn as you can see here it has a quad motor setup so each of the wheels can spin independently of each other which means that it can spin 360 degrees like a riding lawnmower uh, a lot of people have asked for the Cybertruck to do this. I'm not sure how the Cybertruck could do it with just a tri-motor, not having a motor in each wheel. Uh, that's how I believe that Rivian is accomplishing this in their truck, but that was amazing. I loved it. Speaking of vehicles that do things, YouTube is a vehicle that delivers video content to you and to children, which is why they have a YouTube Kids app. However, with a whole slew of controversies that has happened over the past few months, YouTube is getting fined all over the place for both violating children's protection laws, for serving personalized ads, as well as just horrific content being served to children. Anyways, uh, there's a report that came out saying that YouTube was this close to manually curating all videos that came across on a YouTube Kids app, which would make the most sense if protection of kids was the highest priority and you would dedicate any amount of uh, manpower to get that done. However, the CEO of YouTube rebuffed that idea saying that that would turn them into a traditional uh, media company and that's not exactly what they want to be. They want to be a user generated uh, content creator driven platform, not something that's run like a regular media company. So they don't do this. Obviously, they have a whole bunch of other things in place, such as algorithms and reporting, but manually curating YouTube Kids videos is not something that they're doing. But something that the company behind Dead Cells is doing is of releasing the legacy update to the game, which means that in case you liked a previous version of Dead Cells, you can now go ahead and enable that previous version on Steam. The Somebody from the Dead Cells team said that as we move toward regular updates, we were bugged by the fact that we were drastically changing the experience that a lot of people had come to love. So in case you loved a previous version but, or you just really enjoy the regular version, you can now toggle between the two on Steam. There you go. And in case you might want to try out Final Fantasy Remake, there has been a listing on the PlayStation Network that's not quite out yet, hasn't been announced, but there might be a Final Fantasy VII Remake demo coming out. So in case you want to play that, get, get hyped, son. In case you want a lot of RAM in your computer, G-Skill has now announced 32 gig DIMMs with tons of frequencies and tons of low latency. So they have 32 gig models that run at 3200 megahertz and CL14, which means that you can get 64 gigs in just two sticks, which makes me slightly sad because I just picked up this 64 gig kit in four sticks. It's 3600 megahertz, CL16, but G-Skill, why you gotta do me like that? 
why you have to release something as soon as I buy things. Why does technology always have to keep progressing? I hate it. And in case you want high terabyte storage hard drives, Western Digital's got you covered with uh, the 20 terabyte and 18 terabyte Ultrastar DC HC650 and HC550 respectively. They're now sampling those drives out to their uh, supreme customers who need that much storage. Linus needs to get up on this because, I mean, they're, they're maxing out their petabyte vault all the time. So 20 terabytes in each drive, oh, that's a lot of storage. And what's a lot of sales is apparently the iPhone XR, which according to reports that just came out, has been the best selling smartphone in every quarter of 2019 thus far. Currently it sells for $600 for the base model unlocked on Apple's website previously before the iPhone 11 came out, I believe it was $750, so taking a $150 price cut, but it's outselling everything, which makes a whole lot of sense. It's near flagship level specs with just losing a couple cameras, but then it's only $600 and it's an iPhone. So in case you want that Apple life, there you go. But you know who doesn't necessarily want the Apple life anymore? That's not the proper segue. Anyway, Sony, who makes a lot of the camera sensors that you see in all of the iPhones and a lot of other smartphones. In fact, it's said that they have up to 50% of the entire smartphone camera market using their sensors. Well, they are currently unable to meet demand. They are working 24 seven over the holidays, not being able to slow down one bit in order to meet the demand of all of the phones that they have to uh, produce. And with all of the demand that they're seeing, they're building new factories, but it seems like that can't come soon enough. Sony struggling to keep up with smartphone camera demand, which is only gonna get worse as new phones arrive. Samsung, apparently with the S11, the Galaxy S11 that we're expected to be announced in a couple months, well, apparently they're gonna do an Nvidia rebrand, at least according to certain leakers, and they're gonna be calling it the Galaxy S20 instead of the S11. This is obviously something that Nvidia pulled going from GTX 1080 to G RTX 2080 Ti. Friggin' what? Anyways, people who can't count in the tech industry, this is your time to shine. Logic makes no sense. Numbers don't increase in specific orders. Going from Windows 8 to Windows 10 makes perfect sense. Everything's okay in the world. And the Galaxy Fold 2 might also be okay because one of the biggest issues with the original Galaxy Fold is that it's made of plastic and that is just terrible as far as durability purposes. But they have figured out a way, apparently according to recent rumors, that they are gonna have an ultra thin glass display on top of the plastic to help increase rigidity as well as make it so that it's slightly more durable. How thin glass folds, I'm not sure but I don't really know material science that much, but thin glass, glass cover, you can fold it in half now. Brought to you by Samsung. And what's brought to you by Lego is ultra cold temperatures because they were tested by Lancaster University in a cryogenic freezer to go nearly to absolute zero. In fact, they made it to 3.9 milligrees above zero. This is a freaking cry Lego block got frozen. Apparently the ABS plastic is a good thermal insulator is what they're saying. And it could be possible that they might build in case enclosures of things that need to be cryogenically frozen out of Legos because they're, they're gonna insulate it really well. I don't know, but all I know is Walt Disney better have a Lego tomb or I'm gonna riot. And I, I'm gonna riot out on this episode of Hot News. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about all of the articles down below in the comments. Let Catlin know that you miss her. I can already tell that my editing is not gonna be as good as hers. So uh, say that down below in the comments. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Let's close the new year out strong. Love you guys, bye.